Hi everyone, it's Yanis here with a new episode to help you build better daily structure and be in control of your life. It's often hard to make a decision, especially when there are so many factors that directly and indirectly affect ourselves and restrict us from thinking clearly. Today, we'll take a look at Rolf de Belli's book called The Art of Thinking Clearly to learn how to make better decisions. If this is your first time on this channel, then make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to get updates on my latest videos on time management and productivity. Also consider joining my free productivity mastermind group where I do live coaching calls and live Q&As where you have a chance to ask me any questions. Our decisions are influenced by many internal and external things like external social proof and internal brain triggers and our own emotional state. So let's take a look at some of the things that stop us from thinking clearly and influence our decision-making process. Number one, we attribute success to our own abilities and failure to external forces. For some reason, people tend to overestimate their abilities by thinking that they're way smarter and cooler than they actually are. And people often give themselves credit for all the good things that they have achieved. But when it comes to failure, they blame external forces. This sort of thinking and overestimation makes us feel good about ourselves because we all strive to become the best versions of ourselves. But living in false reality is not good because sooner or later we will all have to face the reality and accept it as it is. A great strategy to counter this tendency is to continuously evaluate your abilities throughout tests and accept the results as they are. If the results are good, then keep doing what you do. But if they're not, then you have to put in some extra work. When I was developing my mobile application, I was thinking that my game is better than other games in the market, but I never tested it. When the project was completed and game was launched, it didn't took long to realize that my game was way below the average and my dream of successful game was crashed. What I should have done was testing my game's retention data once we had a playable prototype, but instead I was sticking with my ego. Number two, illusion of control. If you believe that you can control the situation that in fact you can't, then you may be suffering from illusion of control. It's common for gamblers to believe that they can somehow predict the next card or the next spin in the slot machine, but the result is pure luck and they almost always end up losing money. This creates a false reality that has a potential to assist you in making a wrong decision. That's why you have to validate your assumptions and check the data. Don't assume that your new product will be selling well. Instead, release it to the small portion of your audience to see the real demand. The truth is that as humans, we tend to believe that we can control almost everything. But the better strategy is to validate our beliefs. Number three, social proof. How many decisions that you make are truly yours? You'll be surprised to know that very little portion are truly your decisions and most of them are influenced by other people. We live in an age where people count how many likes they get, so you're likely to choose your outfit and your next meal based on what people are liking more. I know that social proof is really strong as it always influences my decision making as well. For example, when I search something on YouTube, I always look for the video with the most views. My thinking is that if other people are watching it, then it must contain the most accurate information about that topic. But that is of course not true. There are dozens of videos with similar or even better quality of content that belong to smaller channels. So you have to be aware when your decisions start to be guided by social pressure rather than your own choice. This will help you to think more clearly and make better decisions that will benefit you in the long term. Number four, information interpretation. Another factor that plays an important role in our ability to think clearly is confirmation bias. It often restricts us to see the situation from other perspective. We tend to consume and accept the information that validates our existing beliefs and in the meantime, we avoid all information that contradicts our beliefs. Let's say you're trying to decide what lead generation strategy you're going to use for your business. You have options to do content marketing, paid ads and cold email. You're not sure, but your friend is telling you that cold email is converting like crazy. But before you make a final decision, you want to do the research. It's likely that you'll be focusing on positives for cold email strategy and negatives for all other strategies to eventually stick with your friend's suggestion. 
To think clearly, you have to see all the data equally. And the best way to do that is to get other person's opinion based on data available. Number five, how comparison affects us. Our brain likes to compare things when making decisions. This is done in order to simplify the decision-making process. You have probably experienced this before. If you see the product that has been discounted from $50 to $25, and next to it there is product that costs $25, then you'll be thinking that the discounted product is better. I know for sure that I often fall for this kind of thinking, but the bigger price does not always reflect better quality or better product. It's just something that marketers use to trick our brain in buying. So when you have to make a decision, don't just think about how one product is better than another, but think about really what you truly need. Number six, keep your decision making in check. Decision making is one of the most energy consuming activities, so you have to make sure that you don't overdo it. Our ability to think clearly is highly dependent on our energy levels, so you shouldn't be making any decisions when you feel tired and uninspired, as those will most likely not gonna be good ones. Instead, try to make your important decisions in the first part of the day, when your energy levels are still high and you're feeling good. Also make sure that your decisions are not influenced by your emotional state, as that can result in snap decisions that you might have to regret in the future. I hope that you enjoyed this book review of the art of thinking clearly, and these strategies will help you to make a better decisions. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you hit that like button. And if you're new to this channel, then type new in the comments below. If you want to learn how to set better goals, make better decisions and build solid structure in your life, then check out my free Productivity Mastermind course to take your productivity to the next level. Also, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss my upcoming videos.